This is our problem statement. We have a countercurrent process with three ideal stages and it's designed to operate with a volumetric flow rate ratio of aqueous to organic that's equal to 5 over 12. We're asked to find the percentage recovery of the gross solute A in the solvent and its decontamination factor from a trace solute B, which is also present in the aqueous feed. We're told that the aqueous feed contains 100 grams of A per litre and one curie of B per litre. And the solvent feed contains no solutes, so it's a pure solvent. The distribution coefficient M for both solutes is a function only of the gross solute concentration XA in grams per litre. So we have our two expressions for MA and MB, the partition coefficient for A and for B, and they're both only a function of the concentration of A. So we start our solution by drawing our system. So we have three ideal stages. This is the aqueous feed here with the concentration of A, 100 grams per litre, and B, 1 curie per litre. This is our solvent feed stream here, which is pure, so there is no A or no B. To begin with, we draw our our operating diagram uh, for A. So what we have here is our concentration of A in the aqueous stream, which is actually in terms of grams per litre. And we have here our concentration of A in the aqueous phase. This is our operating line. And we're able to do that by solving the mass balance over the whole system, which defines these two endpoints. And then we draw it on as a straight line. This is our equilibrium. And we got that from our expression for MA. And we've just plotted it for various values of, of XA. So the way that we use this is we're told that there are three equilibrium stages. So we stop start at the top of our operating line and draw in our three equilibrium stages. And really that should that should finish just there at the, the same point. That's the end of the operating line, so it's fairly close. And using these uh, intermediate concentrations here, here, and here, we can calculate the equilibrium concentration in the aqueous phase and the equilibrium concentration in the solvent phase leaving stage one and likewise for stage two and stage three and we can now put those onto our diagram so this shows for example that the concentration of A leaving stage one is 64 in the aqueous phase in, and it's 40 in the <clears throat> in the solvent phase and likewise for the equilibrium streams leaving stage 2 and the, the equilibrium streams leaving stage 3. So we know all of the compositions, all of the intermediate compositions for A but we don't know anything about B. So now let's construct our operating diagram for B. So again we can solve, solve the overall mass balance over our system which defines the two endpoints of our operating line. And now these uh, concentrations are given in curie per litre in the aqueous phase and in the solvent phase. But now we cannot just define one equilibrium for the whole three stages because our equilibrium will be different at each stage. And that's because the coefficient, the partition coefficient M, is a function of the concentration of A. And the equilibrium concentration of A is different in each stage. So if we consider stage 1, the concentration of A in the uh, aqueous phase, leaving stage 1, was equal to 64. So then we can calculate our partition coefficient B for stage 1 using the expression that was given to us in the problem statement and we take that value of XA and plug it in there and solve for MB1 is equal to 0 0.12. Now that gives us the slope of a line and 
and we can choose some values of x to generate a value of y and we can plot that line on our operating diagram. So here it is shown in green and this is the slope of the line. So what we can do now, this is only valid for the first stage, we can draw onto our operating diagram our first equilibrium stage. So remember when we construct these diagrams we always start on the operating line. So our feed to stage 1 had a concentration of 1 curie per litre. So this is the point on the operating line corresponding to our feed and then we draw on our equilibrium stage. So in this case we go from the operating line to our equilibrium and back to the operating line. This is stage 1. If we now consider stage 2, the concentration of A in the aqueous phase leaving stage 2 was 25. So we can write our expression for the partition coefficient for stage 2 like this. We substitute that value of xA equals 25 into there to obtain our value MB2 equals 0 0.78. And with that, we can plot on this line. And now, our second equilibrium stage, we will start at the end of the first stage, but now because our equilibrium line is above our operating line, we start here at our operating line and we go to the equilibrium line and back to the operating line. So this is an interesting example because in our first equilibrium stage we started with a feed here and we went in this direction. So our aqueous stream was enriched in our trace solute B. In our second equilibrium stage we started with a concentration here and we went in this direction so we actually depleted so we removed solute B from our stream in stage 2. So it's gone in one direction in the first stage and then back in the other direction in the second stage. And the reason for that is simply because for the first stage our equilibrium line was here below the operating line and for our second equilibrium stage our equilibrium line was here above the operating line. So we've done it for two stages, now we simply repeat it for stage 3. So stage 3 our concentration of A coming out was equal to 4. We use our expression again, substitute that value of 4 in there to get MB3 is equal to 2.25 and we can plot yb equals mb3xb on our diagram and that gives us this line here with our new slope and so we just calculate our final stage starting here on the operating line going across to the equilibrium line and back down to our operating line and if all of this had worked out exactly right, that point where it comes back down would correspond to here, the last uh, point on our, on our operating line, and that's actually a pretty good agreement. So, <coughs> excuse me. So what that gives us is our concentrations here, leaving stage 3, and likewise for the other stages. And we can now put all of those onto our diagram. So... Previously we had all our concentrations of A leaving the equilibrium stages, now we have our concentrations of B leaving the equilibrium stage 1 for example, and likewise for stage 2 and stage 3. The final part of the question is just to apply our, our known expressions for the recovery, in this case the recovery of A in the solvent phase, we just substitute in the values that we have and we see that it's equal to 96% and the decontamination factor of A from B in the solvent phase, again we just use our known equations to calculate that the decontamination factor is equal to 1.22.